Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Ha, ah, we're going to have a time with Yeshua today, beloved ones. We are going to talk on how to be the healthiest, the strongest, the most immunized people in the world. So if you have somebody to share, go ahead and press on that button because I'm going to share the biblical bone cure against all demons and all plagues and everything else in between. And the Bible is full of word about this and you will be astounded, surprised what you need to do to make sure you have the strongest immune system in the world. Amen. So make sure that you do that. And as you are sharing, I'm going to remind us of a song that I really like. You may have heard it in other broadcasts, but it goes like that. Whoo, hallelujah. Have you not heard? Has it not been told? There is a story, a story of old. Have you not heard? not been told there is a story a story of old there is a story a story of old so what's the story that a lion has defeated a dragon a lion has defeated a dragon a lion has defeated a dragon the lion of judah has defeated the dragon the Lion of Judah has defeated the dragon. Hallelujah! Woo! Have you not heard? Has it not been told? There is a story, a story of old. Have you not heard? Has it not been told? There is a story, a story of old. Yes, there is. The dragon that a lion has defeated the dragon, the lion of Judah has defeated the dragon, the lion of Judah has defeated the dragon. Oh, Hallelujah! Oh, What a story, yes, amen. What can I say? That is the most amazing story in the universe. A lion has defeated a dragon, and I roar, because he has done it, and this lion is sitting right inside of me today. Are you ready to roar? Hallelujah, are you ready to be victorious? Well, I am ready to continue being victorious all the days of my life. And I'll tell you something, victory starts from the bone marrow. That's right. Victory starts, say it with me today, victory, victory. starts all the way from the bone marrow. Today you're going to learn how the bone marrow and your bones can contain the glory and how that glory repels every demon and every coronavirus and every plague that you can imagine. Let's check it out. And we're going to start with Job 21, 22 to 26. And I hope you're already sharing and give me a lot of likes today, a lot of reinforcement that we know you are there. Amen. So now, let me, let me share a scripture that's very revealing about two types of people, okay? Two types of people. Job 21, 22 to 26. It says, Can anyone teach God knowledge? Since he judges even the highest, one dies in full strength, completely secure and at ease. His pails are full of milk, his bones are moist with marrow. Yet another dies in bitterness of soul, never having tasted goodness. Together they line the dust and worms cover over them. In other words, he's describing two types of people. And one type of person is the one that when he dies, his bones are full of marrow. In other words, the immune system is perfect. And yet he dies. 
In other words, without Yeshua, we are all going to die eternally one day. So that's the importance of the blood of Yeshua so we can have eternal life. But one day, we are going to be buried unless that trumpet, you know, that shofar just blows first and that's fine with me. Then I'm going up with it. Amen. And I hope you will too. But I'll tell you something. When you take two people, one of them, the bone is full of marrow and the other one dies in bitterness of soul. There is a great revelation there. In other words, something that happens to your soul when it becomes bitter that causes your bone marrow to be depleted. And when the bone marrow is depleted, then what happens is that your immune system breaks down and COVID-19 plagues and demons can take over. I'm saying plagues and demons because I'll tell you something, the same way that it works in the physical, it works also in the spiritual, exactly in the same way away because we are spirit soul and body and we are intertwined and working together so whatever affects the spiritual realm affects the physical and affects the physical affects the spiritual so here we go let me share some things about this okay understand that right now this thing about the viruses and this thing about COVID-19 is because of rebellion okay the reason why a virus can take over the reason why people's immune system can break down it boils down to one thing only breaking Yah's commandments that is not Yah's will and desire for his people his will and desire for his people is that we will be in health we will prosper and our soul will be in prosperity just like like 3 John 2 says, and we may touch on the scripture more later on. But that's Yah's will. Yah's is good. Understand this one. Our father is totally good. And like every father, you know, on the earth or mother on the earth that loves their children, they want the best for their kids. Now, he says, if you being evil parent, you want the best for your kids, how much more the Father in heaven wants the best for you? So he wants the best for us. And the best is that our bone marrow will be absolutely abundant. And when our bone marrow is fat and abundant, then our immune system is also great. And when our immune system is great, no COVID-19 can take us over. No flu, no any virus, no bacteria, nothing. Because our immune system is like a soldier. And it's got these um, soldiers inside. And it's like an army, actually. Our immune system is like an army. But in this battalion that we have inside of our body called the immune system that is inside of the bone marrow, there is the soldiers called the white blood cells. When the bone marrow is strong and healthy, the white blood cells are strong and healthy and those soldiers fight back every infection. And let me tell you the same thing in the spirit. When the bone marrow of our spirit, in other words, if we in the spirit are that way fortified, then the devil can come with anything against us, but we are going to be able to repel the onslaught and the battle at the gate. Somebody say hallelujah with that. Amen. Okay. So let me show you how, how sickness, death, fear, the fear of the plague and plagues and demons and all that is connected with the rebellion of people against the Most High God, against the creator of the universe. And that's not his desire. His desire is that we will be whole and our bones and our bone marrow will be absolutely strong. Isaiah 66, 3 and 4 says, As they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delights in their abominations, so I will choose their punishment and will bring on them what they dread. Because I called, but no one answered. I spoke, but they did not listen. And they did evil in my sight and chose that in which I did not delight. So here you see that Yahweh says that because people didn't listen to him, when he called, they didn't answer. They said, now we want to live our own lives, our own way. And then when they did evil in his sight, he brought about for humanity that which humanity was most afraid of. Now, what is humanity most afraid of? I'll tell you the two major things humanity is most afraid of. One of them, uh, when health breaks down. In other words, most of humans are really afraid of being sick. Okay, and they are really afraid of suffering and being hurt. And the second thing, most humans are really afraid of not having money. Okay, two things. Most humans are really afraid of being sick. 
And most humans are really afraid of not having money. Amen? Yes? Anybody there? Hallelujah. Okay, so now he says that he will bring to humanity because they did not listen and because they did not change their evil ways, those two things that they dread the most. He's going to break down. He's going to make sure that health breaks down and that money breaks down. The two things that most of humanity dreads. But that doesn't have to be the case for you and I. And that is the good news. That is the case for those who choose to remain in their evil ways and they are not willing to repent except the awesome gift of grace through the blood and the name of a Jewish Messiah by the name of Yeshua, that means salvation, that paid the price so that we can be completely forgiven for breaking Yah's commandments and rebelling against him and bringing on us the curse instead of the blessing. Yeshua came so he can reconcile us to the Father. And when we reject that reconciliation, the only thing that's left is the curse. And that is COVID-19 and its peers and all kinds of other terrible things that can begin to happen. Now, I'm not saying that people that are believers do not suffer. We do many times. But we have got an address and we have got a power and a grace and a spirit inside of us that gives us the strength, the courage, and the victory to go through every situation which most people don't have. And the second thing is when we say yes to Yeshua is when we reject his commandments that his spirit wants to write in our heart and we want to still play religion and not really live in the kingdom. When we live in the kingdom, his ways are our ways. His thoughts are our thoughts and we absolutely cannot anymore go back to our evil ways. Amen? Amen. And so the thing is this, for you and I, if we are chosen Yeshua, we've chosen to surrender to him completely. His spirit has come into us. It's written his commandments is to write in our hearts and we've responded with faith and obedience. We must have a very strong immune system, spiritual and physical. That is being in the blessing. And I'm going to teach you how you can do that because there's no reason that we, when we are in the covenant, will be succumbing to any demon or to any plague. Say it with me. There is no reason. reason. When I'm in Yeshua, Yeshua is in me, and I walk with him in the ways of Yahweh, there is no reason that I will succumb to any demon or to any plague. Somebody give a good clap offering to Yahweh. No reason. We will not succumb. Now, we have had a lot of people that have been Christians that have succumbed to COVID-19. But there is a difference between being Christian and between being covenanted. Two different things altogether. There are millions of Christians in the world, but not many are covenanted. Covenanted means that my life doesn't belong to me, it belongs to him, and therefore the devil doesn't have the rights to touch it. Because I'm the possession of the living year. When my life belongs to him, Satan cannot touch that life. And that COVID-19 is not sent by the Father to the obedient. That COVID-19 is from the pits of hell, and only when the gates or the doors are open, people can contract it, and the best that can happen is actually repent and surrender your life completely unto him. And If you have surrendered your life and the devil has dared touch you with COVID-19 or with any other plague or with any other demon, then you rise up as a lion, roar, bind, loose, declare the word and cast it out. But don't play dead with any plague because that's not 
our inheritance. Can you say with me, plagues are not my inheritance. Plagues are not my inheritance. Being a martyr for Yeshua is one thing. Dying of a plague is another thing. Being a martyr for Yeshua gives us amazing rewards. And if that's what he chooses for me or you, that somebody will kill us because we preach his name, hallelujah. But, oh, d d dying daily to fulfill his mission, that's hallelujah, yes, and amen. But succumbing to plagues, no. And let me tell you something, you know, there was this amazing apostle of faith that was, uh, he, he was working for Ye Yeshua in uh, South Africa. That was John G. Lake. And you know, he, he, he was very connected to the scripture in Romans 8 where it says that the spirit of life in the Messiah Yeshua has set me free from the law of sin and death. And I'm going to explain to you that the spirit of life is in the bones. And the spirit of life is in the bone marrow. So you will understand how important it is that we deal with the bones and the bone marrow today. So stay with me. Because at the end we're going to pray, hallelujah, for many to be healed, for many curses to break, and for your bone marrow to absolutely be a covenanted bone marrow, full of the sap, hallelujah, of the Holy Spirit and the glory of Yah and, and health. Anyways, uh, John G. Lake, he was at the time uh, of, I, I believe it was the bubonic plague, if I'm not mistaken, it was the bubonic plague. It was terrible, but people were dying by the droves. By the drove, there was no social distancing or anything. That people were just dying, 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 dying in South Africa. And he was a volunteer that was volunteering to bury the people that were dying. Nobody wanted to do that job because people were deathly afraid that if they will remove the corpses from the, from the houses and they would bury the corpses, then they would contract the plague. So nobody wanted to do that. But John G. Lake volunteered to do that work. And somebody asked him, I said, are you not afraid of contracting the plague? And he says, absolutely not. He says, because the spirit of life in the Messiah Yeshua has set me free. Well, he didn't call him Yeshua. He didn't know his name then. At that time, nobody knew that his, his covenant name is Yeshua. Uh, but, but the spirit of life in the Messiah has set me free from the law of sin and death. And if you bring me the foam that comes from the mouth of a person that is sick with this bubonic plague and put it on my hand and bring a microscope, you're going to see that the moment that this infested foam touches my hand, it's going to kill the uh, virus or the bacteria or whatever the virus it was a virus. The virus, it will kill it or the bacteria, whatever it was then, okay? It will kill that bug. And... And that's exactly what happened. They were astounded because no bug, no virus, no bacteria can touch the body of a covenanted man or woman of Yah that knows the word and that walks the word and that is willing to lay down their lives for the sake of Yah and for the sake of his kingdom. So if you got that one, hallelujah, then we know what we can do to strengthen our physical and our spiritual immune system so that we will be able to resist all the viruses, all the retroviruses, all the diseases and all the demons, all that depends on the spiritual well-being and the physical well-being of our immune system. Now, I'm going to deal now with something that is the key to be able to obtain what I just said, which is a great immune system. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, Hebrews 4 verse 12, for the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing right through to a separation of soul and spirit, joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Well, so the word performs surgery inside of us to the point that it penetrates all the way to the joints and to the marrow of our bodies. In other words, the word of Yah, when you speak it, when you declare it, when you sing it, when you prophesy it, has the power to penetrate all the way to your bone marrow and enrich it and make it the strongest bone marrow you've ever had. Somebody say amen. 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 
Now, if you've got that, I'm going to share a lot of word with you, and I'm going to share to you a lot of scriptures that are connected with mouth and bone marrow, so that you know how to stand on the word and what to do. And remember, this is in the context of a surrendered life to the ways of Yeshua. And so, uh, let, let me show you in Hebrew. Okay? The Hebrew for bone is the word etzem. Can you say it with me, etzem? etzem? Etzem. Now, from that word etzem comes the word atzmi. And atzmi means myself. In other words, the essence of who we are is in the bones. That's quite amazing but I'm going to prove it to you so just wait with me now the bone marrow which is that fatty substance that is inside of our bones anybody ever gone to a restaurant and suck on the bone marrow of, let's say you were eating some oxtail soup or something and there was these bones inside and you were just sucking on the bone marrow okay so the bone marrow is that fatty stuff that contains the white blood cells that are the soldiers that fight every disease. Okay, so now the bone marrow in Hebrew is moach ha'etzem. Say with me, moach ha'etzem, bone marrow. But you know what it really means in Hebrew? It means the brain of the bone. So the bone marrow is the brain of the bone. You know, we all know that when our brain is very healthy, then we are sharp, right? We are sharp and we can do a lot of things and nothing is impossible when our brain is healthy. Well, in the same way, when the brain of the bone, which is uh, the bone marrow, the moach is healthy and strong, then you can withstand everything. Hallelujah. Now, I told you that etzem, or the bone, is where the atzmi, the essence of who we are created to be, is. Listen to this. In Genesis 2, verse 21 to 22, we see an occurrence in the Garden of Eden. Yahweh Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall on the man, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place, and Adonai Elohim built the rib which he had taken from the man into a woman, and then he brought her to the man. Isn't that revealing? So when Elohim wanted to make the woman, he went to that which contains all that we are created to be. Are you listening to what I'm saying? All that we are created to be, and he went to the rib that's a bone. And he took that bone or that rib out of Adam, and he fashioned the woman, and he said, Now this is flesh of my flesh bone of my bones, the essence of who the woman is supposed to be was inside of the bone of the rib with that bone marrow that is the brain of the bone. Hallelujah. So the bones are not only foundational, they are essential that for if our well-being depends on the condition of our bones and our bone marrow. Now, let me tell you one more Hebrew word. I'm going to give you one more Hebrew word. Etzem ha'inyan. Now, you know, etzem is bone. I've already told you, right? Etzem ha'inyan is just a Hebrew idiom that means the core of the matter. Or the truth about something. In other words, somehow there is a connection between bones and truth. When we have a truth inside of our bones, we are going to be healthy in spirit, soul, and body. But when we have lies inside of our bones, then we are going to be corrupted and we are going to be unhealthy. We are going to be in unbelief and we are going to be defeated and sick. Now, why do I say that? Very easy. 
because that's where the truth is supposed to reside in Psalms 51 verse 8 Psalms 51 verse 8 it says surely you desire truth in the inner being make me know wisdom inwardly now if you think about your body the deepest thing inside of your body is the bone marrow the deepest thing you know the bones support all of your structure that's a structure that support all of you but if you want to go to the deepest place in your life and that's and that's why in Hebrews 4 12 then uh, is written that the word is sharp and active more than a double edge or a two edged sword to be able to divide us under between bones and marrow to go to the deepest parts of our bodies and that's the marrow and now it says here surely you desire truth in the inner being make me know wisdom inwardly the deepest place a physical place in our life is in the bones and it is the bone marrow that's the reason that the bones are the last thing to go in other words, you know, you, 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 the bodies can decay and all of that, but the bones, you, you can still find sometimes the bones of people a long time after people died. Now, now let me uh, share with you the importance of the word here, because the word is the key factor for our bones to be healthy and our bone marrow to be healthy. Proverbs 3, 7 to 8, it says, Do not be wise in your own eyes, Fear Adonai and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. In other words, the fear of Yahweh, when we depart from evil, so that we know what the fear of Yahweh is, okay? The fear of Yahweh is when we depart from evil. And that's the beginning of wisdom. So the fear of Yahweh and we depart from evil, from everything that he hates, and we come to his ways, to his kingdom ways, that will bring healing to our bodies and refreshment to our bones. The connection between healing to the entire body is in the bones. When the bones are refreshed, the body breaks out in healing. Hallelujah. But in order to be able to enjoy this amazing covenant prover, uh, promise, we need to know truth in the bone marrow. We need to get the word deeply into us there in the bone marrow. And we need to know truth inside of the bone marrow. And we need to banish all lies and things like that. We need to get the truth in. And we also need to be humble. Do not be wise in your own eyes means be humble. Fear Yahweh and depart from evil. That will be healing. Amen? Now, you know, when I'm talking about the immune system here and that being in the bone marrow, I include autoimmune diseases, okay? I'm not only including things like, you know, uh, plagues, but also auto any, any kind of autoimmune disease means that your immune system is actually attacking itself, and that's wrong. So if the immune system is attacking itself and that's wrong, then there's something that's not going right there, and therefore it's so important that the word can penetrate all the way deep down to the bone marrow and to the bones, and it's very important that you depart from evil. And we're going to mention some things that are evil in his eyes, uh, but all in all, it's very easy. You, you, the moment that you say yes to Yeshua, he will come with his Holy Spirit, write the Torah in your, in your heart, you're going to read the word, and he will begin to write his commandments inside of your heart, and you will be departing from evil one after the other. But the truth is that when you get saved, it's so miraculous and so much grace that he transports us from being one person to becoming another person. The moment I said yes to the Messiah, there was a before and an after. I was before a person that was steeped in sin and witchcraft and occult and, and things like that, bitter and whatnot, and within 24 hours or less than that, within the moment that I said yes, something had changed inside of me, I'd become born again, I received a new spirit, and now I began to feed that spirit with the word, he baptized me in the Holy Spirit, I be began to pray in tongues, which is perfect prayers when you pray in the spirit, and he began to write his Torah and his word in my heart, and therefore things that I didn't know instantly, I knew afterward, but right from the beginning, it was obvious to me that I couldn't continue in fornication, I couldn't continue smoking, I couldn't continue in anything like that. Not only I couldn't, I hated it. 
Because the moment that you love ya, that you fear ya, you hate evil. And that brings health to your bones. I was really in death straits. My hair was being lost and, and I was in bad shape. But I'll tell you, the moment that I said yes to him, I remember one of my first prayers was, Lord, please restore my hair. And just a few months later, I was looking in the mirror one day and I saw my curls and my hair restored and beautiful and everything. And now I know that it's so connected to the condition of my body and especially my bones. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So now, uh, to, to make it even more poignant here, I want to make it sharper, okay? Sin makes the bones sick and breaks down the immune system. Say it with me. Sin, Sin makes, makes the bones bone sick and breaks down, down the immune system. system. Psalms 38 verse 4. There is no health in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no wholeness in my bones because of my sin. This is King David talking. Do you remember what was the sin? Adultery and murder. And therefore, what happened to King David immediately after he adultered with Bathsheba and he murdered Uriah the Hittite, the husband of Bathsheba, is that he said that because of the indignation of Yahweh, there was no health in his flesh and there was no holiness in his bones. In other words, his immune system broke down and he was as sick as a dog. That's basically what he was saying. Now, let me tell you some other Results of having real bad bones, or bones that have been penetrated by lies, by sin, by breaking yes commandments and things like that, and by evil. Okay, now maybe maybe you have repented and maybe you've come to the kingdom, but maybe you didn't know these principles before. And so this is hallelujah, the great time to know the principles and to go into the fullness of the blessing of the covenant. But one more thing that happens to people. Because of, uh, because of attitudes of the heart, by the way, a lot of it because of attitudes of the heart, like bitterness, for example, or jealousy or things like that. Let me tell you what happens, arthritis. And let me talk to you about arthritis for a moment. Arthritis is the result of inflammation in the joints. Where does the word of God go? All the way to the joints and to the marrow. Also, if the word is not going to go there, there's going to be something else there. There's going to be arthritis there. So arthritis is the result of inflammation in the joints, and it's the most common disability in the United States. Did you know that? In fact, studies have shown that over 350 million people worldwide struggle with it. That's more people than COVID-19. It's a condition that affects individuals of all ages and backgrounds and can make even the simplest tasks difficult. In most cases, arthritis is degenerative, meaning that it stems from everyday wear and tear on the body. However, there are cases in which it can be triggered by an autoimmune disease, infections, or diet. In other words, arthritis can come because of wear and tear, or it can come because of an autoimmune disease that you may have, or it can come because of infections or because of diet. Bad diet definitely can bring that on. But is that something that is irrevocable? Is that something that we can do nothing about? Well, you know, my mom had arthritis, and actually she did. My mom had degenerative terrible arthritis, and I watched her. She wasn't a believer for most of her life, only at the end of the end of the end. She kind of gave her life to Yeshua, and she was like a thief on the cross entering in. But, but I watched my mom with a degenerative arthritis grow weaker and weaker and more and more unable to do anything with her hands. There came a point where she couldn't even dress herself. And then he, he, she ended in a nursing home and with complete disability where they used to give her this ball so that she will do this exercise. She couldn't even do that. And eventually she stopped moving altogether. So, beloved ones, I really know what I'm telling you. So, according to medicine, well, you know, they always ask you, well, if your mom suffered from this, then you should suffer from that, and the other one says, well, let me tell you something. That is not my inheritance. You see, my covenant inheritance is not degenerative arthritis. My covenant inheritance is having the strongest, most blessed bones and bone marrows and joints 
an articulation, and anyone that knows me, you know that I've fallen countless of times, especially when I had 20 kilos over, which was about 40 pounds over, and I lost them, praise yeah. But when I was about 20 kilos overweight, I kept on falling. I didn't know why I kept on falling, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, because you are too small, your frame is too small, so you keep on falling. And I could have broken many bones, but I didn't broke any one of them, and I'm going to show you also, because the covenant promises that none of the bones of the righteous will be broken. And but, but before I get there, let me tell you something. According to all that I've gone through in life, whether it is fam uh, in my family, whether it is physical, okay, whether it's emotional or spiritual or all the attacks of the enemy against me, I should not be able to move. But anybody that knows me, they know they need to catch up with me. Amen? Anybody here? Amen. Yes. Yeah. Well, I've got a 21-year-old saying amen, so I guess it's true. Hallelujah. I've got younger people than I sitting around me here, and they know that they need to learn to catch up with me because degenerative arthritis is not my inheritance, and it's not yours. Yours is to have fabulous joints and fabulous bone marrow and fabulous bones, but you've got to decide to have them. Say with me, I've got to decide, got to, decide. to have them. Amen? Amen. Praise the living Yeah. Now, I'm going to now give you one parameter that will make your bones flourish. You will be surprised at this one. Do you know that loving Jerusalem will make your bones flourish? Here it comes. In Isaiah 66, verse 13 to 14, it says, As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you, and you will be comforted in Jerusalem. Then you will see this, and your heart will be glad, and your bones will flourish like the new grass, and the hand of Yahweh will be made known to his servants, but he will be indignant towards his enemies. Wow, what a promise. It says our bones will flourish in Jerusalem and we will be comforted. That's, of course, for all of the Jewish people because we have suffered so much, 2,000 years of exile in the nations, that Yahweh's promise to us is that we will be comforted in Jerusalem and that our bones will flourish. And truly, honestly, I can tell you that the Jewish people shouldn't be alive, but <laughs> instead of that, we are alive and we have a country and we are flourishing in spite of anything. So this is a promise for the Jewish people, but it's also a promise for everybody that loves Israel and that loves Jerusalem and the Jewish people in action. How do I know that? Because in Psalms 122 verse 6, it says, pray and see to it that all is well with Jerusalem. In your Bible, say, pray for the peace of Jerusalem that will prosper those who love her. Well, in Hebrew, Shalu Shlom Yerushalayim Ishlayu Ohavai. Shalu Shlom Yerushalayim means make sure that Yerushalayim, Jerusalem is blessed, is whole in every way. And if you really take care of Jerusalem and of Israel, of the Jewish people in action, with your prayers, with your givings, with your coming and goings to Israel, that's why I tell all the people that come with me, many times people come with me on tour to Israel, and, and you know, they say, but Archbishop, you know, I've got this disease and I'm sick with that. Just, I said, just come and you'll get healed. Just come and you'll get touched. Don't worry about it. I've seen so many people getting healed miraculously when they've walked with us in the land of Israel, the power of Yah comes in, hallelujah, and especially when people are willing to love Israel in action, in every way, shape, and form. It says they will prosper, they will be blessed, they will be in shalom, they will be well, they bone marrow shall prosper, because I already told you that the only way that we can be blessed physically and in our health is if our bone marrow and our bones are in good shape. And so, basically what he's saying is your bone marrow will flourish just like in Isaiah 66 and your bones will flourish when you love Jerusalem, when you love Israel. Somebody say hallelujah to that. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. 
Imagine that everybody would know this secret, amen? So now you can tell them and you can share it for everybody to know. Begin to pray, give, come, act for the well-being of Israel and your bone marrow is going to start flourishing. What a promise. Now, I'm going to give you more promises and I'm also going to give you also more warnings. Very important we understand the warnings and the promises, both of them. But I want to give you a little piece of information that's not very nice. Most retroviruses that are causing disease come from laboratory mice contaminated vaccines and blood supplies. I'm going to repeat that again. Most retroviruses, which is viruses that actually come from uh, the tissue of an animal. In other words, a mice or a monkey especially, but especially mice. That, and they're causing disease, like terrible diseases. And I'm going to show you which ones I mean. They come from laboratory mice and, that, and the tissue of the laboratory mice have cross-contaminated into human tissue and also have contaminated some blood supplies. And so I can tell you that a lot of people have retroviruses inside of their bodies, especially in the United States of America. What are you to do in a situation like that? Well, I'm giving you something today that is going to bring about an overturning in your body because there is nothing impossible for Yahweh. He absolutely can go into any area of your body where there are viruses or retroviruses and by the power of his word and the power of his spirit kill them all and get them out of your body. That's the power of Yah. And you are going to make sure of it if you are wise to apply what I'm telling you and you're going to begin to see an overturning in your immune system, in your bones and everything else. Amen? Amen. Now, you know, I find it quite amazing that, uh, that the cross-contamination from laboratory mice into human tissue that has affected vaccines and has affected blood supplies, hmm? would come from mice and from unclean animals. Because look what Isaiah 66, verse 16 and 17 says. Okay, I'm just throwing a tip in here in the midst of this thing about the bones because we need to realize that right now there are millions and millions in the United States and also all over the world that have been contaminated and that have those viruses or retroviruses. Isaiah 66, 16 and 17. Yahweh warns us about these things. He says, For Yahweh will execute judgment by fire and by his sword on all flesh, and those slain by Yahweh will be many. Who are these? Those who sanctify and purify themselves to go to the gardens following one in the center. Who eat swine's flesh, that's pork, bacon, ham and all of its derivatives, detestable things that can be anything like conies and uh, horse meat and camel's meat and catfish and um, shrimp scampi and crabs and all of that stuff, detestable things. You want to know more about it, you go to Leviticus 11 and you will see those things that Yahweh calls detestable, amen, because they break your immune system, physical and spiritual. Detestable things and mice will come to an end altogether. So there is a direct relationship that when people ingest these things in one way or another, that they will come to an end altogether and there will be judgment upon them for the simple reason that these things bring about a breaking in the immune system because they are detestable to Yahweh. And that's what Leviticus 11 also says, so go read about this. And let me tell you something, the devil knows he's, he has a little time, so he's tried to attack from all directions. Let me tell you something about retroviruses, which are viruses that actually are not they are RNA, one strand, okay? Retroviruses like XMRV that cause prostate cancer and chronic fatigue syndrome are from cross-contamination of mouse tissue into human tissue and they are airborne. Lab technicians and research doctors became infected and so it happened with COVID-19. Do you realize that when it's airborne, there is nothing you can do because it's airborne? 
These retroviruses are airborne. COVID-19 apparently is airborne as well. There's nothing you can do. The only thing you can do, though, is you can have the glory in your bone marrow. You can have the power of Yah inside of your bone marrow that will repel every virus and will kill every retrovirus that you may have inherited through vaccines or through blood supplies that have been transfused into your body. So I'm giving you ecstatic good news today, extremely good news, and I hope that you are listening and you will share with everybody. Now, how do I know all these things about XMRV? Well, it's all over the place, but, you know, I'm reading an amazing book that I, I you know, I pretty much... Um, pretty appreciate the knowledge of this lady. She's a doctor. Her name is Judy Mikovic. And she wrote a book called The Plague of Corruption. Amazing book. It's, it's totally shocking uh, to discover some things that are happening within the medical system. What can I tell you? Absolutely shocking. But I'm not dealing with that right now. I'm dealing right now with what can you do once there has been contamination and once these retroviruses and viruses are actually airborne? You, you see, there has been historical facts recorded that lab technicians have contracted them, not because they, uh, you know, have touched them, but because somehow it went through the air. So we know they are airborne. And what I'm giving you today is the importance of the strengthening of the bone marrow and the bones, which is the seat of the essence of who we are and the place that fights all plagues and all those demons. Somebody say amen. amen. See, Satan is called the prince of the power of the air. And in John 10, 10, his job is to steal, kill, and destroy. And humanity is under a curse for rebelling against the ways of the Almighty. The more that we espouse these horrendous agendas of immorality, killing babies sometimes all the way to the ninth month, the more we are murdering babies in the womb from the moment. Do you know that from the moment, for example, that a sperm and an ovum, uh, you know, match, the moment that an embryo is formed, it has been detected that there is a spark of light at that moment. Why? Because life came into that embryo, we already have a human being there. So go ahead and keeping murdering babies is opening multitudes of people to be under the curse, because that's murder. And keep on supporting agendas that are contrary to the creation of Elohim, of one man for one woman, and not one man for one man and one woman for another woman, as long as we continue espousing those political globalization agendas that the purpose is to control the world with wickedness, then the humanity is in rebellion against the ways of the Almighty and is at the mercy of every virus and every retrovirus. And I'll tell you something. If we think that COVID-19 is the last one, you're absolutely wrong. There is many more that will be coming. How are you going to be and how are you going to defend yourself? Both during this life and for eternity, beloved ones. And that's the reason why I'm telling you that the first step to be able to fight all of these viruses and fight all of these demons and fight all of this demonic agenda is to fear Yahweh and hate evil and leave evil. And it starts with understanding that Yeshua paid the price so we can be forgiven. So there's nothing we can do to obtain this. The only thing we can do is what I did um, over 32 years ago when I said yes. I didn't even know. But I knew that if I said yes to Yeshua, I lived, and if I said no, I died. So if you say yes to the Jewish Messiah, and you surrender your life to him, he will come with his spirit, and he will teach you how to walk, and he will empower you how to walk, and you will have authority, and his word will begin now to strengthen your body, strengthen your immune system, strengthen your bones, and you will have authority and power against all demons and all plagues. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to continue showing you something about the curse, because I'll tell you, I sometimes think that people are not too aware of what I'm saying right now. 
I think that they kind of, you know what's happened? Because there's so much wickedness right now that's been espoused. Like it's totally acceptable to live together, to be in fornication, to be in a morality, to be homosexual, to be that. And, and, and to, to keep on espousing all these causes and, and to kill babies in the womb and to cheat and to lie and to betray your husband and to betray your wife and to divorce simply because you don't like each other. And well, the, these things are so prevalent right now. And to love mammon many more than love. Yeah, and to be greedy and to want more money but not be rich towards God and to withhold your tithes and your offerings and everything else because you love your money more than you love him and you don't want to advance the kingdom and so many delving into pornography and they think well that's not I'm not really doing it I'm just you know looking at it and I'm just watching it well it's the same according to Matthew 5 when it says that when you look at a woman to lust after her so you've committed already adultery against her and so many people are delving also into witchcraft and, and they're reading Harry Potter and all of this stuff that is full of witchcraft and all kinds of books and it's become so popular today to be sinful. It's become popular to be wicked. But I'll tell you what happens that people don't realize that this wickedness is costing dearly to humanity because it's opened up now the way for Satan to come in and possess humanity all the way and he is going to do it also through viruses and retroviruses and uh, things like that and vaccines and whatnot and uh, polluted blood supplies whatever he's going to choose whatever he can to make sure that humanity is broken down. Deuteronomy 28, 20 to 22. And, I, and I'm going to contest something with you right now because many people come and say, well, if God was really nice and he was really good, then we wouldn't be suffering from coronavirus and he was really good, the Holocaust wouldn't have happened and he was really, really good, then we wouldn't have this situation and the, there wouldn't be racism in the world and, and, and the little children wouldn't go through this incest. Beloved ones, it's got nothing to do with him. It's got everything to do with us. He is totally good. His utmost desire is that you and I will be in health and we will prosper just as our soul is prospering. That is 3 John 2. His utmost desire is what's written in Exodus 15, 26 when he says, I will put on you none of the diseases of Egypt. He says that to the people of Israel. Because I am Yahweh Rofe. I'm the God that heals you. Yahweh in Psalm 23 says, I'm your shepherd and you shall not lack. You shall not want. That is his utmost desire for you and I. But when we break his commandments, but when we rebel against his ways, we can only expect the curse. And it doesn't matter. You can stand on your head and, say, and be super prideful and wise in your own eyes and say, well, if he really was good, evil wouldn't happen. But I'm going to tell you something. He is not only good. He is absolutely the epitome of goodness. And he wants that for each one of us. But it starts with the word repent. And repent means Repent means return to him and forsake all evil and be forgiven because of the sacrifice of Yeshua. And once you are forgiven, your spirit will come and will teach you how to walk in holiness and righteousness, but you forsake evil, beloved. Until we repent and forsake evil, we cannot expect to be in the blessing. Now let me show you how the curse works so that you understand that when people rebel, and espouse rebellious agendas against the living God, then the only thing that comes in is virus, retroviruses, and curses. Deuteronomy 28, 20 to 22. It's good to read the whole chapter from 1 to 14. It's all about the blessings when we hear him and when we obey him. And then from 15 and on, it's all about the curses. And I'll tell you, it's very revealing. Strongly suggest you read it. But I'm only going to take three verses here. It says, Yahweh will send on you. That's in case you don't hear and you don't obey. Yahweh will send on you cursing, confusion, and frustration in every undertaking of your hand that you will do until you are destroyed and perish quickly because of the evil of your deeds by which you have abandoned me. Yahweh will make the plague cling to you until he has put an end to you from the land that you're going to possess. Yahweh will strike you with weakness, 
fever, inflammation, fiery heat, the sword, blight, and mildew, they will pursue you until you perish. Now let me show you COVID-19. Weakness, fever, inflammation, fiery heat, all of these things happen to people that are sick with COVID-19. Arthritis, inflammation, all these things. What is that? Those are the curse. Those are the curse that is given, well, here uh, is, is, you know, Moses speaking to the people of Israel. And, and unfortunately, I'm very sad to say that many, many pastors have not prepared their flock for what's coming. Because they've told their flocks that, okay, well, all those laws and commandments are for the people of Israel. And we Christians can break them as much as we want to and nothing will happen. Well, we are darn wrong. We are so absolutely wrong. And that's the reason why there are so many Christians. I, you know, I just heard something horrendous. There was a country, what country was that, that I heard in Nicaragua that, that there was like 10 pastors, no, 100 pastors in Nicaragua died in the same day from COVID-19. 100 pastors. Ten of them from one congregation. Beloved, there's no way, no way, no way. But when we push away the laws and commandments of the Creator, we are going to open up the door for the curse. The moment that we said yes to Yeshua, the mark of the new covenant is this Holy Spirit that comes inside of us and empowers us to walk in naturally, supernaturally, and writes the commandments and the Torah and all the commandments of morality and social commandments and all of those in our hearts. Commandments of holy worship, all of those written in our hearts. And there is no way that if you push those away and if you push the Holy Spirit away when he wants to teach you to walk in holiness and righteousness, that you can be in the blessing. There is no way. That's the reason and that's why the Word of Faith movement went wrong. It went wrong, but well, not all of it. I, I, I learned a lot of things from the Word of Faith movement. I'm very grateful for many of the people that taught very important principles about standing by faith in the Word. And this is what I'm telling you today, today as well. The importance of knowing these things so that you can speak it to your bones and to your bone marrow and you can learn how to strengthen your bone and your bone marrow this is all word of faith but the word of faith movement was missing something and it was missing obedience to yes commandments it was missing the fear of Yahweh that departs from evil and so what happens is that people like parrots they went and they just declared the word declared the word like parrot but they never repented of their sin so they stayed in fornication, they stayed in pornography, and they, <laughs> they declared the word. They kept on maybe giving and tithing and showing to this preacher, to the other preacher, but they never repented of their sin, and they were hoping to, to reap a lot of harvest from the money that they were giving, but they stayed in their sins, you see. And so what I'm telling you today is that so that our bones and our bone marrow can be in the blessing and all of our body can be whole, then we have got to let his commandments penetrate us all the way to the depth of our being, to our bone marrow, because it says the word of God. Now understand that when Paul the Apostle gave the scriptures of Hebrews 4.12 about saying the word is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating all the way deeply to the joints and to the marrows and even dividing between the soul and the spirit, that, that means dealing with emotions as well and things like that, that's not only the word of promise. That's also the word of the commandments of Yah. In other words, when we let the commandments of Yah penetrate to the depth of our being and they will be written inside of our bone marrow and inside of our bones, then because we are going to walk in them because they are inside of us, then we are going to be whole. It will be healing to all of our flesh and it will be refreshing to all of our bones. Is that revealing or what? Amen? Is that so revealing? So it's not only promises, it's promises and commandments. Both need to penetrate to the depth of our being to bring about health. Hallelujah. If not, we can only expect the curse, which is cursing, inflammation, fever, plagues, and I'm teaching you today how not to be there. Amen? 
So sin makes the bones sick and breaks down the immune system. We already told, I already told you that from the word. Um, and what King David said when he said, there is no health, Psalm 38 verse 4, there is no health in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no wholeness in my bones because of my sin. So keep that in mind. So holiness will bring about health. Hallelujah. But if the bones are stricken, it breaks the immune system and it brings destruction to our health. For example, when the devil was tempting, you know, well, tempting, he was really wanting to prove and test uh, Job. And he said, he said this in uh, Job 2.5 uh, to the Almighty. He said to Yahweh, you know, yeah, look, Job hasn't cursed you yet. But now stretch out your hand and strike his bones. Hmm and this flesh, and it will certainly curse you to your face. So in other words, he said, when you strike his bones, it's the worst place that you can strike in his life. And that's the same with every one of us. The bones at the bone marrow is the most important thing that we have to make sure and keep healthy. Hallelujah. They affect all the rest of the body. For example, take osteoporosis. See, osteoporosis is, is when a person has dry bones. When the bones are dry and brittle. And oh, there are so many millions that are suffering from osteoporosis that believe it's an irrevocable predicament. Something that, well, the doctor said, the doctor knows, forget about it. Well, I'm going to tell you something. There is an antidote against osteoporosis. And it is the word of Yah, both his commandments and his promises. And if you take the word and declare the word into your bones and obey the words and the commandments that Yahweh writes in your hearts and depart from evil, you're not going to suffer from osteoporosis. That's not your inheritance. So break it off you. So stay with me to the end because we're going to do a lot of business here in the spirit to break all of these lies from off you. Remember that he wants truth in our innermost being and the most deepest places inside of the bone and the bone marrow but if you got the lies that it's irreversible that it's irrevocable that there's nothing you can do that for sure osteoporosis okay you will take a little bit of vitamins but other than that you know you are going to suffer from it all of your life we need to break those lies all the way in your bones all the way in the bone marrow and you will begin to apply what I'm telling you today and you will be well according to the word amen in fact let me show you something about prophesying to the bones and especially to dry bones take a look at Ezekiel 37 4 you know when Ezekiel saw a valley full of dry bones that was the whole house of Israel Yahweh gave us an amazing principle here he says prophesy over these bones that's what Yahweh said to Ezekiel prophesy over these bones he said to me say to them dry bones hear the word of Yahweh so uh, you see he sees all this valley full of dry bones and he says, and, 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 and Yahweh asks Ezekiel, so can they live? It doesn't look like they can live. And so Ezekiel brings the ball right back to the Almighty and says, well, you know. And he says, well, let me tell you. Yes, they will live. And I'm going to tell you how they're going to live. Prophesy to them. And tell them the word of Yahweh. Prophesy over the bones. Tell them the word of Yahweh. That word that penetrates to the joints and to the marrow. Tell them the word of Yahweh. Prophesy unto the bones. Say with me, prophesy. Prophesy, prophesy unto the bones. Unto the For bones. the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. Say with me. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing right through a separation of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Wow. How amazing, isn't it? How tremendous. So we see here that he uh, say prophesy to the bones. So we need to prophesy to our bones. So if somebody, if, if, if doctors or anybody has said to you that you are going to have arthritis, you're going to have osteoporosis, and uh, you probably contract COVID-19 because you're in the danger group or whatever, um, or you're in fear of all of that, just break the power of that fear and begin to prophesy to your bones and to your immune system the word of Yahweh and the word of promise. Hallelujah. 
Now, let me tell you one more thing about uh, causes for dry bones and osteoporosis. It's very important here, what are the causes? I told you already that wickedness, sin, evil, breaking Yah's commandments, rejecting his ways, uh, his Torah, um, you know, all of these things, rebelling against his, uh, uh, you know, his will. And I'll tell you what happens is that there's a lot of people that are very, very religious. Well, you know, maybe not very, very religious, but even re mildly religious, whoever is religious. But that doesn't cut it because Yah has called us to surrender and to obedience. And that's the reason why in Matthew 7 it says not, you know, many will come on that day and they will say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this in your name and that in your name? He says, he says I never knew you, you workers of lawlessness. In other words, you didn't want my Torah. Uh, you workers of Torah listeners, you didn't want my commandments, and so I, I never really intimately knew, know you. So there are many people that will say, well, but I'm a Christian, but well, I've gone to church. Well, now most people can't because of COVID-19, but well, I've gone to church, or well, I do this, or well, I do that. No, no, the question is this one. Are you obeying the call of Yah upon your life? Are you really obeying what he called you to do? Or is it that you're in a place of you know, convenience. And I tell you the truth, I believe that millions of Christians, I would say more, most, and even millions of those that call themselves messianic, are nowadays in what I would call something like the uh, permissive will of God. In other words, they, they believe sort of, but often they deny the power. So they believe sort of, but without the power of the Holy Spirit, without authority. And then they don't have power or authority to be able to deal with arthritis, osteoporosis, or with viruses or retroviruses. Sometimes I watch, you know, Christian movies uh, in Netflix, and I'm horrified. Most of those movies end up being absolute defeat. Well, there is a, a real victory, the victory of the soul, but always the body either dies or is sick forever. Well, but that's not what Yah said. He said, I am Yahweh Rofe, the God that heals you. And I will put on you none of the diseases of Egypt. And that's not what he said in Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 53 uh, from 5 and 6 and 7 when he says, you know, by his stripes. We are healed. You already paid the price, not only for our salvation, but also for our healing. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise you. Now, the thing is also, there is something else that happens. And, and, because, and that's also because of religion. I think that of all the most dangerous things on the earth, I would consider religion the most dangerous one. Tell you why, because religion is like a placebo, and a placebo is a false medication, kind of like you give, you give a sugar pill to a dying patient and tell them that it's going to help them. Well, the sugar pill never helped them, but they are under the misconception that's helping them, and then the cancer patient eventually dies because he received a sugar pill. Well, religion is a sugar pill to the soul. Many people today have been sucking on the sugar pill for a long time, and especially in the United States of America. But to be honest with you, I think that most of the world is in that predicament right now. They've been sucking on a sugar pill, and what happens is that they're about to die, whether they're about to die physically because of COVID-19 or, or cancer or whatever, osteoporosis, osteomyalgia, you tell me, or... And, or they're going to die eternally because they have not surrendered their lives and they have not repented of their evil ways. They still profess to know Jesus Christ. Well, maybe they do not know the name of the Messiah is Yeshua and that's his covenant name. But they still somehow, you know, have known him in one way or another, but yet they have never repented of their sin. And so they are on the verge of spending eternity with that which they are filled with. Because you see, whatever you are filled with, that's who you're going to spend eternity with. If I am filled with the Holy Spirit and I'm filled with the glory all the way to my bone marrow, I'm going to spend eternity with the Holy God of Israel and in His glory. If I'm filled, if, or if anyone is filled with fornication, adultery, jealousy, bitterness, covetousness, greed, immorality, huh? 
hatred, whatever you are filled with, you're going to spend eternity with that which you are filled with. So you can profess being a Christian, but that's not going to save you. What's going to save you is a personal relationship of faith and obedience with the God of Israel through his son, the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua. And that means that he's got a plan for your life, but if you have your own plan and your own agenda and you think you can get away with it, maybe you will be able to get away with it for a few years, but you won't be able to get away with it for eternity. One day we will all face him and we will have to give an account if we surrendered completely to the call that he gave to our lives or whether we ran our own lives the way that it was convenient for us. And right now, I would say that one of the biggest sins in the church is convenience instead of obedience. One of the biggest sins is religion instead of relationship. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And you know what happens when we have religion instead of relationship? And when we have convenience instead of obedience? Is that actually people that, ha that walk that way, they are going to hide sin. They have unconfessed sin inside of them. And that unconfessed sin is going to kill them physically and eternally. Look what Psalms 32 verse 3 says. Here, one of the main causes for osteoporosis. Take a look. When I kept silent, my bones became brittle through my groaning all day long. That is when I kept silent about my sin in the context of this uh, psalm. is King David again talking about his sin with Bathsheba and the sin of immorality, adultery, and murder. Okay? And so he said, when I kept silent, remember that until Nathan the prophet came to him and confronted him and gave him a parable, and King David basically uh, finally admitted, but until then he had kept silent about his sin. And when, until he kept silent, he said that his bones became brittle through his groaning all day long. He began to already experience osteoporosis because osteoporosis are brittle bones, direct result of unconfessed and unrepented sin. So if you've got unconfessed and unrepented sin in your life, the best that you can do is to confess it and forsake it, and you will find mercy. Of course, the best way to do that is you can do it directly with Yah, but also the Word tells us to go to someone that's a real believer, someone that has power and authority and confess our sins before them, and the prayer, uh, the, the effectual and fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much, and it will avail much. Now, now, I know that at this point you are right now watching me online, and you are not in my meeting physically, but you can confess any unconfessing today, and when we are done, I am going to pray for you. I'm going to break those curses of brittle bones and every other thing, like broken immune system, because of unconfessed and unrepented sin. I'm not talking Catholic confession here. Catholic confession is confess, confess, and stay the same. I'm not dealing with that. I'm talking about true confession and repentance. That's teshuva. In other words, we confess, but we forsake. Say with me, confess, confess. and forsake. And forsake. And forsake. To be able to forsake sin, you've got to have faith that Yeshua, the Messiah, has already paid for you to walk in holiness and righteousness. In other words, when you truly believe in him, you are going to be able to forsake sin. That's a real sign of faith. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. And so when I kept silent, if you keep on being silent about your sin, chances are that your bones are going to become brittle and that your immune system is going to be totally broken down. That's the worst case scenario here on earth because when the immune system is broken down, all of your health is broken down. But there is a much worse scenario than that, which is eternal destruction. Okay, here we go. Look at this, what happens. When we allow fear to rule our lives, it's a sin. And it actually destroys our immune system. Job 4, verse 14. 
dread and trembling seized me and made my bones shake. Dread and trembling seized me and made my bones shake. How important is it, and especially during this time where most people are breaking down their immune system because they fear a virus or they fear recession more than they fear the God of Israel. And because of that, their bones are shaking. And when the bones are shaking, the bones become sick and brittle and the immune system gets broken down. In 1 Timothy 1.7, it says he has not given us the spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. Say with me. He, Yahweh has not given me a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. Dread and trembling are not my inheritance. Shaking of bones is not my inheritance. Brittle bones is not my inheritance. Inflammation is not my inheritance. Plagues is not my inheritance. Do you see what I'm trying to tell you here? He is so good that he wants you and I to be completely whole. But for that, we need to hear and do his ways. We need to do, we need to walk according to his ways, not ours. So simple. Look at this. Now, I'm going to share with you a divine bone protection to the righteous that I've lived by. When I'm saying I've lived by, I'm saying this I have tested all the way till recently. And this has been my life verse. Well, one of them. I've got a few life verses, but I'd say this is one of the main life verses in my life. Psalms 34, verse 20 to 21. Many are the distresses of the righteous, but Adonai delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. So you can see here there is a tremendous promise that the righteous will have no broken bones. I've lived by this. As I told you before, I've had some horrendous falls that could have left every one of the bones in my body completely broken. The latest thing that happened to me happened to me right here because uh, I, I had some bruised ribs. And because my husband loves me so much that he picks me up and gives me a great hug and it bruised my ribs. Now, I've forgiven him. Don't worry about it. But sometimes I remember and I remind it so that he will never, you know, ex use the amazing strength that he has to pick me up the way he did. But he just was loving on me. It didn't mean anything bad, but it bruised my ribs. And I was in a tremendous pain. And I went to the chiropractor. Uh, you know, I, nor, I don't even have my own personal physician, so uh, my personal physician is Yeshua all the time. But sometimes I go to a chiropractor when I want things to be adjusted or something like that in a natural way without being invasive. And I went to the chiropractor, and the chiropractor checked me out, saw what I was suffering from, saw the level of pain, and he kind of touched, you know, the area of my ribs, and this is what he told me. He said, Mrs. Bierman, you have broken ribs. And I told him, Doctor, I have no broken ribs. I never break any bones. And he said, Mrs. Bierman, I bet you that you have broken ribs. No, I said because it's written in Psalms 31, 20, 21, that none of the bones of the righteous will be broken, and I'm righteous because of the blood of Yeshua, and I walk in his kingdom, and none of my bones will be broken. And he was, you know, smiling and said, well, I know a lot of righteous that are broken bones. I said, no, maybe they're not like me. You see, sometimes that people are very religious, but there is that difference between being religious and righteous. If we walk righteous before Yahweh, that means completely surrender to him with all of our heart, mind and strength, believing the word above anything else and walking the word above anything else, none of our bones will be broken. And I've tested it. So he sent me to x-rays. Came back from the x-rays. And he had another smile on his face. And he says, Mrs. Bierman, you won. 
you have no broken ribs. I said, I told you, none of the bones of the righteous will be broken. So learn now that when you surrender to the Messiah with all of your heart, mind and strength, your bones belong to him and not one of your bones will be broken. And so he was so excited and ecstatic. He told the whole clinic and even hung my card over there, said you're part of the family now. I mean, that's a chiropractor. He really wants to know, you know, how to make sure that people don't break bones. Hallelujah. Amen. So none, say with me, none, none. of the bones of the righteous will be broken. Now, if the bone marrow is in the bones, what gets affected when you break bones? The immune system, right? The bone marrow, because that's where the immune system is. So when bones get broken, it's not only the bone that suffer, it's also your immune system that suffer. It weakens you overall. That's what broken bones are. Uh, and so we need to learn to walk righteous before Yahweh with no broken bones. Praise the living Yah. Now listen to this one. This is in the context of many of the distresses of the righteous. But Yahweh delivers him out of them all. Yes, we are going to have distresses. But yes, we need to choose and decide to believe that he will deliver us out of them all. And when we decide to believe that and we prophesy that into our circumstances, then we will see the hand of Yahweh delivering us out of them all. And when we prophesy over our bones and say, you hear bones, you are the bones of the righteous and you will never be broken. And you will be prophesying over those bones. The word will not come back empty, but it shall surely accomplish what it was sent to do. Amen. 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 Now look to Proverbs 1430. I'm going to give you some more to work with here before uh, we wind down. I know this, this particular broadcast is a bit longer than usual because this, uh, is, this subject is so important that I don't want you to miss on anything that you would know because this is foundational for you to walk whole and this is the utmost desire of the Father and my desire for you as well. Proverbs 14 verse 30. Proverbs 14, verse 30. A tranquil heart is life to the body, but envy is rottenness to the bones. In other words, a heart that sits peace in shalom eh, is life to the body, but envy or jealousy is rottenness to the bone. Are you jealous of someone? Are you jealous of someone and you're coveting what they have? Or are you angry with someone because they have more than you do? Huh? Are you angry with somebody because Yahweh has blessed them but not you? Jealousy. Jealousy will rot your bones. Then you will have osteoporosis and every osteo you can imagine. And when it rots your bones, your immune system breaks down and COVID-19 and any, any other plague can take you over. Jealousy and envy is so dangerous. It's a wicked spirit. In fact, the word tells us that, you know, there are many things that, that are really bad. But he said, who can stand before jealousy? It's the most wicked spirit. It's the same spirit that manifested with Cain against Abel. And it murdered Abel. Same spirit that manifests to the council of Nicaea and caused the murder of millions of Jews in the name of Jesus Christ for jealousy because Constantine roamed, well, we're many more than the Jews and we know better. Jealousy. Jealousy is so dangerous. If you have any of it today and you've put up with it and you think that you can actually harbor it, I'll tell you right now, it's working rottenness in your bones. So the best you can do is repent today for jealousy. Amen? best you can do. So if you have it, the best you can immediately begin to, to say, no, Father, forgive me. Forgive me for jealousy. I repent of that. Amen. Hallelujah. Proverbs 15, 30. Bright eyes bring joy to the heart. Good news gives health to the bones. See, I'm bringing you good news today. I'm bringing you news of how you can actually walk whole. That's really good news. Because I'll tell you what, if you're listening to the news, you're only hearing bad news. And in this bad news, you're only going to hear how many died of COVID-19, how many contracted it, uh, how many are sick, how many are being tested. But there's, there's no good news there. 
But I'm bringing you really, really good news right now. And the good news is that if you apply these biblical principles, you're going to have the best bone marrow and the best bones in the world. You're going to walk holy, you're going to walk righteous, powerful, full of authority and full of bone marrow. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. So make sure that you keep on hearing good news. It's doing something good for your bones. And so the best that you can do is get away from those news. People today are addicted to bad news. And so what happens is that the, those bad news, you see, the word of Yah penetrates all the way to the bones and the marrows. Let me tell you that that's the nature of words. The nature of words is to penetrate to the depth of our being. Whatever you hear, whatever you pay attention to, whatever you listen to is going to penetrate deep into your being. So if you're listening to evil, that those words of evil are going to penetrate to the depth of your body. That's the reason one of the things that we also break is curses because of words that have been spoken against you. They need to be broken because they may have penetrated all the way to the depth of your bones and the depth of your marrow. And so words penetrate, beloved ones. So when you hear the news, don't think it's pussycat. No, no, no. You be careful that you only go to hear what the Holy Spirit allows you to hear. Be careful. Very careful. We are living in a society where people want to have more and more knowledge. You be careful that you have only the knowledge that he lets you have. Because much of the knowledge that you're having, that you're hearing in podcasts or in videos or in TV programs or anything like that, is knowledge that destroys you from within, brings evil, brings wickedness all the way to your bones and all the way to your immune system. As a reason, I'm very, very cautious as to what I'm going to hear because I know it penetrates, and so I want to hear what he says. It says, Proverbs 16, 24, look at the power of words. Pleasant words are honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. How important it is, you know, especially when people are going through difficult situations, to come with a pleasant word, with a word of encouragement, with a word that brings hope. It says it's sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. In other words, words can heal. And if you begin to exercise that, what I'm telling you, you will be able to do that and prophesy those words over other people. And you will prophesy scriptures and scriptures of promise and word of promise over other people. And they will be healed because of the words that are coming out of your mouth. Because the moment that it's healing to the bones, it's healing to the immune system. That's the reason a lot of the miracles that we've had in the ministry have come through me singing or speaking the prophetic word over people. Very often, I've just sung or spoken the prophetic word over people and they've gotten miraculously healed. Why? Because those pleasant words that are sweet to the soul and healing to the bones penetrated all the way to their bones and caused the bone marrow to be healed and the immune system to be healed. Proverbs 17, 22, so important that you make sure your heart is in good shape. It says a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. See, many people respond to circumstances from their heart. And you've got to protect your heart. This is, this, I'm going to tell you, look, look, I'll tell you something. Very seldom do I preach something that I don't live. And if I preach something that I don't live, that means I'm going to be living it right then. Most of the things that you hear me preach are things that are tested. I've been at it for 30 years, and I have tested these things, and they work. So what I'm giving you, I'm giving you what I have. And what I have is that this works. When you protect your heart during evil times, when you protect your heart when things are going difficult for you, when you're being hit with, with sometimes situations that uh, were shocking or surprising or traumatizing, you were not expecting them, hello, anybody? Anytime that you get hit by them, the first thing that you need to do is protect your heart. Protect your heart and, in, and, and hide your heart in him and do not allow your heart or your spirit. It's interesting that it's connecting the heart with the spirit here. Don't allow your spirit to be broken. Now look, look, look what I'm going to tell you because I've been telling you that the seat of who we are is in the bones. Well, isn't it clear? 
a crushed spirit dries up the bones. In other words, there's a direct relationship between the condition of our spirits, who we are, and the condition of our bones. Because the spirit is in the bones, and I'm going to prove it to you very soon if you stay with me. The spirit, the glory, the anointing, the spirit of life is in the bones. So when the spirit breaks because your heart wasn't covered, wasn't protected, and you responded to the circumstances from your flesh instead of from the spirit, then you're going to dry up your bones and your immune system will break. That's the reason why most people, when they go through trauma, they normally, their immune system breaks. Very often when I have somebody that comes to me and they have, let's say, something like uh, MS or fibromyalgia or all kinds of difficulties and difficult diseases, a cancer even, and even arthritis, I asked them, I said, and, you know, how long have you been suffering from this? And let's say a person tells me five years. I said, what happened five years ago? And normally I find out that exactly before they began to suffer from this condition, there had been some tragedy that hit them, or there had been some breakdown that hit them, or some trauma, or some shock in their lives. And so what I go is I go to break the power of trauma into the bones. With the power of the word, I go into the bones by the power of the Holy Spirit and break the power of trauma in the bones in Yeshua's name. And even as I'm saying that, I see at least five of you are getting healed right now. Hallelujah. Because that, that trauma, that, that shock, that tragedy is broken out of your bones because it smashed your spirit and it dried up your bones and it affected your immune system, especially autoimmune diseases are very seriously affected by that. So beloved ones, you must protect yourself from a crushed spirit. Believe me, I've gone through some things that anyone else that I know, they would have had a crushed spirit. But I didn't let it. I worked with it and I worked with it. I made sure that I was in Yeshua and that I prayed and I was with him and I retreated and I allowed him to heal me and I, and I stayed connected to him so that my spirit will not be crushed and so that my bones and everything else will be intact as well, beloved ones. Important what I'm telling you. A cheerful heart is good medicine. So I know that sometimes there are some things in life that are very difficult, but do not allow your spirit to be crushed. You know that um, when you see in the Torah, uh, sometimes the high priest, for example, Aaron, you know, he lost some children, some sons that were trying to give to Yahweh some strange fire and they became a crisp, they were burnt to a crisp. And they died on that day. And what did Elohim say to Aaron? He said, do not mourn for them. Because you carry the anointing oil. Do not mourn for them. Does it mean that we can't mourn? There is a way to mourn and a way to mourn. One way to mourn, and I've had that way, and I know that way very well, because I've had some tragedies in my life. Uh, I don't know anybody that hasn't had something, but I, I have had some serious things. And I have mourned healthy. And mourning healthy means that I mourn unto him and I allow him to heal me and comfort me. But some people mourn unhealthy. Then they mourn unto themselves. They become self-centered and they become full of self pity and when they mourn with self-centeredness and self-pity and to themselves they become hopeless and when they become hopeless the spirit is crushed and the bones become brittle and then the bones eventually and the bone marrow gets affected and also the immune system you see am i telling you something important today very important and i'd say this is one of the most important messages that i've ever preached to be honest with you I truly believe that if you hear me very well today, you will be able today to shake off a host of infirmities, a host of diseases, and you will be able to break through so that you will not suffer the predicament of a broken down health and immune system. So let's go to this. We're going to go to Job 33:19. A person is chastened with pain on his bed with continual strife in his bones. Now, let me tell you something about this particular strife in his bones. You know, 
pain and strife in his bones. If anybody has ever suffered pain in your bones, you know what I'm talking about. If you have suffered from pain in your bones, the Bible calls this strife in your bones. And that means the bones are not at peace. The bones are not reconciled. And I'll tell you what it is. It's that the spirit and the soul are not reconciled with the word and the creator. When your bones have strife inside, that means that you are in strife. That means that you are not walking in shalom with the creator of the universe. Maybe you are angry. Maybe you are upset and angry because he didn't do things the way you wanted him to do them. Maybe you, you kind of tried to figure out how he was going to answer your prayers, but he didn't answer your prayers the way that you figured it out. And so what happened is that you are in strife with Yahweh. You are not at peace with him. You are not in shalom with him. That's one way that you can be in strife with him. When you are complaining, complaining inside of yourself all the time, you are in strife with Yahweh. When you are angry because he doesn't do things your way, or things didn't go your way, or people betray you, or something happened you didn't like, and you're angry and you keep that anger. You know, the word tells us not to allow the sun to set on our anger. Why do you think it's that? Because if we allow one day to pass with the anger in our heart, What's going to happen is that it's going to affect our bones and our immune system and we're going to have pain inside and strife in our bones because we have swallowed a bunch of lies. When we have truth inside, we have no pains in the bones. When truth is in the bones, remember I told you the truth needed to be in the bones? When truth is in the bones, there will be no pain in the bones. There will be no strife in the bones. So, if you are in strife with yourself, with Yahweh or with someone else, get reconciled. Get reconciled. Forgive Yahweh. Not that he needs your forgiveness, but you need to forgive him. Because really, I mean, he hasn't done anything wrong, but you have interpreted something wrong. You have believed some lie somewhere. So forgive him for your sake. And then if somebody did something against you, forgive them too and release them from your judgment. I'm not saying that you sanction them. I'm not even saying you need to trust them. I mean, there's some abusers out there you shouldn't be trusting. That's not the point. But do not grow bitter. So don't be in strife within yourself. Forgive and release. Say with me, forgive and release. Forgive and release. There's only one judge. Amen? The God of the universe. He's the only judge. There's no another judge. We are not supposed to be there to judge another one. But yes, we can judge a situation. Yes, but we need to let go of those people, not even for their sake, to be honest with you, for our sakes. When we, and you know, in Matthew, in the book of Matthew 5, it says that when we forgive others, Yahweh forgives us. When we don't forgive others, then he doesn't forgive us. So really, it's for our, I forgive for my sake. Because I don't want to be bitter, and I don't want to have strife inside of me, and I don't want to have strife in my bones. So forgive ya, Abba. Forgive Abba when you don't understand some things. Okay, fine. So his thoughts are about your thoughts, duh. I mean, he said that. He said that his thoughts are going to be above your thoughts. His ways above your ways. You didn't get something. It's something your logic couldn't comprehend. That's fine. Just trust him. At some point, you will know. Pray a lot in tongues until he reveals. But if you don't know right now, maybe it's not your time to know. You will know in due course, or maybe you will know in eternity. Just trust him. Hallelujah. Amen. So forgive him. Let it go. And then forgive anybody else that hurt you. And then also many people are in strife with themselves because so angry about things that they consider to be their own failures about their own mistakes, which many times is true. I mean, they have made mistakes, and we've made mistakes. We've all made mistakes. That they hold themselves under judgment. And so forgiving yourself and releasing yourself from your judgment is as important as forgiving others and releasing others from your judgment. And if you forgave, yeah, you forgave yourself, you forgave others, you will not have strife within you. And if you don't have strife within you, then the pain in the bones is going to leave. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the living, yeah.
Now, let me tell you one more thing, and I've been talking about some things that will prevent you from, you know, brittle bones and from uh, broken immune, down immune system and the importance of prophesying the word into the bones, both the commandments and the promises. Now, but I touched on something. I touched on grief a little bit. I, I touched on the issue of, um, of traumas and of tragedies. You see, when we do not learn to work through sorrow in the right way, remember that I told you that I work through my sorrow in a healthy way. I work through my mourning in a healthy way. I work with him, with his word, thanking him and worshiping him and letting him speak to me and heal my heart and forgiving. Okay, that's dealing with sorrow. I'm not hiding uh, before him. I'm always telling him, you know what, Father? My heart is very deep in sorrow. Thank you for your comfort. And then I begin to worship him or thank him. And I go into the word and let him touch me or hear some worship music or begin, you know, I, I use the weapons of our warfare. I use the things of the kingdom to deal with my sorrow without denying that I have grief when I've had grief, okay? When I've had situations like that. That's a healthy morning. But if you do not deal with your sorrow in a healthy way and it's a mimi thing and it becomes a, unto you instead of unto him, uh, a self-pity and, and the victim, then what's going to happen is that sorrow is going to to literally kill you. Your strength will fail. Look at Psalms 31 verse 11. It says, For my life is consumed in sorrow and my years in sighing. Huh? That's somebody that has a lot of sorrow, right? My strength fails because of my anguish and my bones waste away. Now, what did I tell you? I tell you that about 350 million people in the world are suffering from arthritis. And that most of the reasons they say it's because the bones waste away. So why do you think is that? Because most of the people do not deal with the sorrow in the right way. They are not dealing with the sorrow unto Yah, unto the Creator. They are dealing with the sorrow unto themselves. Or they utilize Satan's devices to, heal, to deal with the sorrow, like drugs, like cigarettes, like wine, like any kind of alcohol, like fornication, immorality, like pornography, like bad movie, all kind of stuff like that. They use everything that they can, or sugar, right? Sugar, 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 sugar. Why? Because they feel so bitter inside, so sorrowful inside, that they want sugar, 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 sugar. So instead of dealing with the sorrow, in a godly manner, they deal with the sorrow in an ungodly manner. And what that does, it brings on degenerative arthritis. Because it says that my bones, my strength, not only that, it also completely breaks the strength, which means the immune system breaks down. When your strength breaks, that means the immune system has broken down and you're at the mercy of the co-viruses and everything else. My strength fails because of my anguish and my bones waste away. So how important is it that you learn to deal with your sorrow in the right way? Now, I believe most of you have not dealt with sorrow in the right way. The best that you can do is take your time. By the way, one of the things that you can do is that you can write us an email and you can uh, require uh, or, or sign up to our email, actually sign up to our email Shabbat letters. You go to kad-esh.org, sign up to receive our weekly Shabbat letters. In the next week, we are going to put a link to a very special thing called the Freedom from Pain Seminar and how you can actually take a time of retreat and deal with inner pain and with deep sorrow so that you can be healed and you can get the sorrow out of your system and your bones can be repaired, can be restored and truth can be in your inmost being and you can also strengthen yourselves for the times to come. So if you sign up to our Shabbat letters within the next week or so, we're going to have our team put it there so that you can have it as a free download, as a gift from us. But for that, you need to be signed up to our Shabbat letters, kad-esh.org. Now, I know this 
Ah, you know it's gone long, but I'm not going to finish until I'm finished. So here you go. The Shabbat belongs to Yah, and I believe that this message is more than important. So I'm going to tell you something. I told you that the word penetrates to the depth of your bones. I told you that bad words or good words, you know, it can be Satan's word or even a medical prognostication, so how bad if things are going to go for you, or it can be Yah's word. The blessing can penetrate all the way to your bones when you prophesy over your bones. But in the same way, the curse can also penetrate all the way to your bones. Look at this. Psalms 109, 16 to 20. There is a thing called a curse oil and there is a thing called the anointing oil. Look at this. Psalms 109, 16 to 20. For he never remembered to show mercy. He's talking about somebody that never remembers to show mercy. But he persecuted a poor and needy man, crushed in spirit to put him to death. How? He loved cursing. Somebody that loves cursing, listen well. These people that love cursing, their mouth utters blasphemies, utters curses, cuss words, things like that. And they have no mercy. They persecute the poor and the needy. And it says, how he loved cursing, may it fall on him. He had no pleasure in blessing. So many people have no pleasure in blessing. They have cuss words on their mouth all day long. He had no pleasure in blessing. May it be far from him. He wore cursing like his robe. In other words, that's a person that loves cursing. He wears cursing like his robe, but we can wear the blessing instead. Until it filled his belly like water. It says, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. But this is not rivers of living water. This is rivers of cursed, bitter waters. And his bones like oil. In other words, this, that behavior of being a blasphemous, cursing person with no mercy that persecutes the weakest people, that kind of thing brings about the curse to the point where a person can wear curse like a robe and until his belly, instead of having living waters coming from the Holy Spirit, will have cursed waters coming from the belly. And you know how many people die from having water in their bellies? Their bellies bloat out and they're full of water. Those are not blessed waters. And that's not the waters of life. That's the waters of curse. And then, and also it filled his bones like oil. So there is an oil that comes from the curse that penetrates all the way deep to the bones. And then he says, may it be like a cloak wrapped around him, like a belt tied around him always. Let this be Yahweh's reward to my accusers and to those who speak evil against me. See, all these people that speak evil, that slander, that gossip, that accuse, that speak curses, that are constantly persecuting people that are weaker, um, weaker in their eyes and things like that. They're functioning in another spirit. They're jealous, all that. They are in danger of wearing the curse like a robe and of having their bellies filled with cursed waters and their bones with cursed oil, the oil of the curse. But instead of that, we can have the robe of righteousness and the robe of blessing and the oil of the anointing of the Most High God inside of our bones. Hallelujah. And we can have his living water coming out of our bellies. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. And this wonderful news. Amen. Amen. Now, in Proverbs 12, 4, we're going to continue on this one. There is a warning to wives. It says, a virtuous wife is her husband's crown, but a dishonoring one is like rottenness in his bones. When a wife doesn't walk in holiness and in righteousness, hmm, what happens is that this can cause even rottenness in the bones of the husband. And you ask yourself, why would it affect the husband? I mean, she's the one doing what she's doing. Because husband and wife are one. The Bible says that it's the only relationship in the face of the earth where about we are completely one in spirit, soul, and body. We're supposed to be one. Of course, not everybody is one because there are some people that are in the spirit worshiping Satan and the other one is worshiping God and they're unevenly yoked. I understand that. 
But nevertheless, still, there is something, uh, a, a special marital soul tie that is connecting husband and wife. And what happens is that what the wife does affects the husband. And what the husband does affects the wife. To the point that if a wife, for example, you know, goes ahead and let's say prostitutes herself and goes into immorality and whatnot, that's what causes shame to her husband, and then even his bones can rot. You know, we've we got to be careful here because we do affect each other, beloved ones. And that's why it's so important, hallelujah, that we learn to walk in truth and life and in holiness and righteousness. Amen. So, I'm almost finishing, but I cannot finish without this too. In Ezekiel 37, verse 5, I told you that the spirit of life is in the bones. Well, Ezekiel 37, verse 5. Thus says Yahweh Elohim to these bones. These are the dry bones that he was prophesying over. So now he's prophesying. He's speaking the word to the bones. And you need to speak to your bones. I say, thus says Yahweh Elohim to the bones. Amen. Your word is health to all my flesh and strength to all my bones. Hallelujah. Through the stripes of Yeshua, I've been healed. And begin to speak to your bones and to your bone marrow. And he says, Thus says Yahweh Elohim to these bones. Behold, I will cause Ruach, spirit, to enter you so you will live. Now you can do the same with your bones. Whatever it hurts, just touch it and say. Thus says Yahweh Elohim to these bones. You have bones somewhere? Behold, I will cause spirit to enter you so you will live. In other words, the spirit of God goes all the way to the bones. When we are filled with the spirit of God, we are impregnated all the way to the bones. Take a look at what happened with the bones of Elisha, the prophet. And that is one of my most favorite stories in the Bible. In 2 Kings 13, 21, it says this. Listen, how filled with the glory was Elisha, and he was living under the old covenant. When we're living under the new covenant, we should be even more filled with the glory because we are baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire and our bones and everything is to be impregnated with the Holy Spirit and fire. Look at this. 2 Kings thirteen twenty one. It came about as they were bearing a man. Behold, they saw a marauding band. So they threw the man's body into Elisha's tomb. As soon as the man's body touched Elisha's bones, he came back to life and stood up on his feet. Do you understand? Elisha was dead. And he had been dead for a long time, so the only thing that was left, there was no flesh anymore, there was only bones. And they throw a cadaver, they throw a dead man into the same tomb of Elisha, and the bones of Elisha were so full of the glory, so full of the anointing, that they resurrected the man and he stood up on his feet. Now let me tell you something. If Elisha the prophet had that kind of power in his bones, let alone me or you, because the word of Yah tells us so clearly that of the born of women, the greatest one was Yohanan Hamadbil, John the Baptizer. But anyone that's born of the Spirit is greater than John. When we are born of the Spirit of God and filled of the Spirit of God, we are greater and our bones get impregnated with the Holy Spirit. But when we impunity go ahead and, and without any you know, fear of Yahweh, we just go ahead and think that we can live any which way we can live or break any commandments and, and that's okay and everything's okay with him. We break and then we break that fellowship. And when we break that fellowship, then we don't have that power, that anointing, that glory inside of our bones. And when we believe lies, then it breaks that fellowship. And when we don't believe his word and his promises, we break that fellowship. So it's so important that we do not break fellowship with the Holy Spirit and the word of Yah, that we maintain that fellowship live, vibrant, active like that two-edged sword, so that your bones and your body and your walk with Yah is constant. It's not ups and downs and ups and downs, but constant. Hallelujah. Say with me, constant. Awesome. Well, that's definitely how Elisha walked. Elisha was constant. He didn't care. He just worshipped Yahweh. He just served Yahweh. He just believed Yahweh. He walked in boldness and in faith and everything like that. And we need to learn to walk that way at least and more because we are under the blood 
of the new covenant. So where is the spirit of life? In the bones. Romans 8, 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Messiah Yeshua has set you free from the law of sin and death. Now let me say it again because I want you to say it with me. For the law of the spirit of life in Messiah Yeshua has set me free from the law of sin and death. Okay, now I'm going to put words to the law of sin and death. For the law of the spirit of life in Messiah Yeshua has set me free from the law of viruses, retroviruses, and all plagues. Can we say it together? For the law of the spirit of life in Messiah Yeshua has set me free from the law of viruses, retroviruses, all plagues, arthritis, and osteoporosis, autoimmune diseases, and all immune diseases. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Woo, I'll tell you, your bones are going to begin to respond. But you've got to be faithful to prophesy to your bones, to speak to your bones bones. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Look what it says in Psalm 35, 9 and 10. It says, Then my soul will rejoice in Adonai and delight in his salvation. All my bones will say, Yahweh, who is like you? Rescuing the poor from one too strong for him, the poor and needy from one who robs him. Beloved ones, the bones speak. I want to have my bones speaking the word of Yah all day long. And if you will have your bones speaking and rejoicing and praising the Father, and you will have your bones thanking Him all the time, the bones say, the bones speak, the bones have a voice. So we know the spirit of life is in the bones. We know the essence of who we are is in the bones. That's why the woman is taken out of Adam and it's a bone. It's a rib that's taken out of Adam to form the woman because the essence of, of the man, of Adam, is in the bones. On top of it, the bones speak. And you can have strife in the bones or you can have shalom in the bones. Oh my gosh, I'll tell you, I could really stay with you the whole evening with this. But I'm going to finish, and I'm, I'm going to finish very soon, but, wow. Shall I? Isaiah 58, 10 to 14. Listen to this. Now I'm going to give you a comprehensive cure from the Word for all those diseases and all of these bone issues and immune system issues. This is the key. If you give yourself to the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then your light will rise in darkness and your gloom will be like midday. Then Yahweh will guide you continually, satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. In other words, when you give your life up to bless others, your bones are going to be strong. Hallelujah. Self-centered people have weak bones. But selfless people have strong bones. Is that awesome? And then it says, you will be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. And then it goes on to say, some of you will rebuild the ancient ruins, will raise up the age-old foundations, will be called repairer of the bridge, restore daughter of streets of dwelling, if you turn back your foot from Shabbat, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call Shabbat a delight, the holy day of Yahweh, honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, not seeking your own pleasure, nor speaking your usual speech, then you will delight yourself in Adonai, and I will let you ride over the heights of the earth, and I will feed you with the heritage of your father Jacob, for the mouth of Adonai has spoken. So here you go. Give your lives away to Yah. Serve Him with all of your heart, mind, and strength. Pour out your life on the altar for others. Be selfless instead of self-centered and selfish. Hallelujah. Keep the Shabbat and learn to worship Him on His holy day and rest on that day. 
and the rest will be histories, your bones will be strong, hallelujah, and your immune system, all this. I cannot begin to tell you the quantity of people that have actually been healed when they repented of breaking the Shabbat and not resting on Shabbat or not worshiping on Shabbat. I've had people miraculously healed because of that. A lot of miracles have happened because he promised that. And he said he will make us, feed us with the heritage, feed us with the heritage of our father Jacob. Okay, that's a lot of prosperity. But I'll tell you something, that's also good food. And good food has everything to do with the immune system. I'm giving you good spiritual food, but you also need to have good food, healthy food. If you stay with me, I will give you some at the end after I've prayed. For those that decide to stay all the way to the end, uh, I'm a nutritionist and a health consultant. I don't have my cl clinic anymore, but I did in Israel for many years. And I had two health food stores in Israel for many years in two different places. And it's a passion of mine to make sure that people are well and healthy. So if you stay with me after we do the prayer, then I will also give you uh, some basic foundational things that are important for your immune system as well. Amen. Hallelujah. So now let me tell you something, and that's going to go to all the prophetic people out there and all of you that are called to speak his word. You know, sometimes Yahweh has called you to prophesy, to exercise the gifts of the Spirit or to do something, and you don't do it. And you need to understand that when you resist the Father's calling, and when you resist the Holy Spirit, it affects your immune system. Because what happens is that when you grieve the Spirit, then it's grief that gets bottled up inside of your bones instead of joy. And when there is grief that gets bottled up in, uh, inside of you instead of joy in your bones, then it breaks down the immune system. Look at this, Jeremiah 28 to 9. For whenever I speak, I cry out. I proclaim violence and ruin. This is a prophet that's speaking to Israel to repent because there's these terrible things that are happening. Well, today also, right? There's terrible things that are happening. There is violence, there is ruin, there is plagues, and there is difficulties, yes. And, and, and he was saying, yes, there is all these difficulties, but Yahweh is calling you to repent. He was talking that to Israel. For the word of Yahweh is corn and ridicule to me all day long. People were mocking him because he was telling them to repent. But if I say, I won't mention him, or speak any more in his name, then it is like fire burning in my heart, shut up in my bones. I weary myself holding it in, but I cannot. So when you are not faithful, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, pastors, prophets, apostles, teachers, fivefold ministry. When you're not faithful to really give the people the word of Yah, and instead of that you're caressing their ears, and the word of Yah is like fire shut up in your bones, when you shut up the fire of Yah in your bones and you don't allow it out because you do not want to get into trouble with the sheep and you caress their ears so that everybody will love you and you've decided to be more popular with men than with God himself, then that fire shut up in your bones will bring a break, breaking of your immune system. I believe that's one of the reasons why so many pastors died in Nicaragua. There had been some fire shut up in bones there and it broke it down. I am so sad about that, but I pray that if you're listening to me today, then you will never compromise the word. You will never compromise the word of truth and you will call the people to repentance and you will call the people to forsake their evil ways, to forsake sin and also to forsake replacement theology and anti-Semitism because that word is shut up in the bones of many that actually know about it but they don't want to get in trouble because they, uh, they feel they could be like the prophet Jeremiah that could become a scorn and a ridicule. Well, let me tell you something. I prefer prefer to be a scorn and a ridicule before men, but be popular with God. And if you decide to be popular with God rather than with men, and you are a minister, you're a pastor, you're, and even if you are anybody, any saint, any, any, any brother or sister in Yah, and, and, and Yah gives you a word to give or something to, to give, 
Let me tell you something. If you have the fear of men, it will destroy your immune system. It will destroy your relationship with Yah, but it will destroy your immune system because that means that you love your life more than you love Him. And that's the situation in many pastors. They love their ministry, their churches, their monies, their tithes, their offerings more than they love God. So they have not confronted the sheep with sin. But the truth is that they haven't confronted themselves with sin. They only can give what they have. And if they are in sin, they will give sin. If they are in compromise, they will give compromise. If they want popularity with men rather than God, they will, they're, they're going to be very seeker friendly and, and preach things that are popular with everybody. But I tell you what that does, that breaks down both the spiritual and the, the spiritual immune system of the people of God. And it breaks down also your physical immune system as well and opens up the door for the plagues, COVID-19 and everything else. Wow, what can I say? What can I say? I, I just want to tell you today that that's the most important thing I want you to remember is that the seat of life, strength, spirit of life, and health is inside of your bones and inside of the bone marrow. So make sure that you keep them strong and make sure that you prophesy over them and that you live a life without reproach before your maker. Let us pray. Let us pray. I said that I'm going to pray for you today and I will. And then after we finish praying and I finish breaking curses, I'm going to give you some more things uh, in the natural arena, not, not too long, just a very, very short list, basic principles that will help you. But today, we are going to ask forgiveness from the Father if we've broken His commandments, including if we've compromised our calling because we've been more walking in convenience than obedience. If you've had jealousy, if you've had bitterness in your heart against anyone, this is the time to repent. If you have active sin and you haven't repented and you haven't confessed it, this is the time to confess as well. So we're going to do that first. So say with me, Father in heaven, thank you for your truth. For I have heard your truth today and your truth has penetrated to the depth of my being all the way to my bones and to my bone marrow. And I respond saying, forgive me for all these unconfessed sins. Now begin to confess them, whatever they are, if it's jealousy, if it's bitterness, if it's fear instead of faith and unbelief instead of faith, if it's uh, believing more what the doctors say than what the Word says, if it is uh, hate, uh, if it is anti-Semitism, it is breaking the dietary commandments and ingesting detestable animals that break that immune system, if it is breaking the Shabbat and treating it like any other day instead of absolutely honoring it because it's the fourth commandment, um, if it is uh, hating or dishonoring your parents, uh, if it is lust or pornography or any kind of addiction, if you're a smoker or drugs or alcohol, um, or if you are full of pride and arrogance and you, you are wise in your own eyes, okay, begin to just, just confess everything before the Father. Or if you know what his call has been but you've been compromising because you don't like it or because it's not comfortable for you and you prefer your comfort zone than to be obedient to him or if he told you to give a certain amount and you decided not to give it because you love your money more than you love Yah, than you love God, which is a problem with many that have greed and the love of money instead of the love of God. If you've been withholding your tithes and your first fruits and your offerings and you haven't been rich towards God, also that's a sin. In fact, and that's a serious one and I didn't get into that, but it says righteous given delivers from death. That's in the Proverbs. Um, 
And so, Father, we ask your forgiveness right now. And if there's some things I didn't mention. Maybe you committed a murder and you aborted your baby. You've never confessed it. You've never repented of it. Uh, his forgiveness can come in uh, together with his healings uh, so that his, your womb can be healed, but also that you will be an example to others of not to do that again uh, and even fight. You know, sometimes we need to make restitution for the sins committed. And so we fight for the causes, like fight for pro-life, for example. So a very important cause for every woman that is in the faith that's committed uh, any kind of murder of babies is like seek to bring life hallelujah so repent receive forgiveness receive healing but make restitution seek to bring life for everybody that has been a Christian that has replacement theology or there's been anti-semitism in your life or in your family uh, bloodline is also seek to love on Israel love the Jewish people and give because the Jewish people have been spoiled so give for the cause of Israel and give hallelujah so that you make restitution for the sin of anti-semitism for example the sin committed and you bless uh, causes of Israel for example in the United Nations for Israel or our against-antisemitism.com uh, platform uh, which is uh, going to train people about the identity, the Jewish identity of the Messiah to uh, help uh, completely eradicate anti-Semitism within Christianity, for example. And so if I'm just talking right now, I'm allowing you to have time to allow the Holy Spirit, because we want the Holy Spirit right now to bring to your heart, to bring to your mind every which way. Maybe your thoughts have been possessed with evil. Maybe you've had lust in your thoughts. Maybe you've been watching, for example, movies, or you've been listening to a lot of news much more than the word and so you your mind is full of bad news and you've got to repent as well because people right now are in idolatry concerning the news they absolutely spend more time with the news than in prayer and than in the word I mean it's not an issue when you go and just skim over the news to see what's going on but really go deeply into studying the news the wickedness of it all and the wickedness of the globalist and the wickedness of all this agenda and everything else else is sin beloved ones because it says that we should meditate on things above and not on things on earth we should meditate on things that are lovely and of good report and all these things so if you your mind is full of that stuff you gotta repent because that means that your body and your bones and even your bone marrow is full of bad news right then and there if you have placed doctors above the word above your faith above Yeshua himself you are in idolatry I can tell you that I know that America has been in idolatry to medicine because nearly everywhere I go I see more medicine uh, clinics and shops like anything else there's two things that I see the most uh, financial institutions and medical institutions why because of those are the two things that have been worshipped in this country so if that's you beloved ones where about you've trusted your doctor above the Holy Spirit above Yeshua above the word uh, then I can only tell you that you need to repent you really do need to repent uh, sometimes the Lord will send you to a doctor sometimes he won't Sometimes he will allow you to go through a checkup. Sometimes he won't. We got to learn to be led of the Spirit because as many as are led of the Spirit of God are the sons of Yah, the sons of God. Not led by the doctor, not led by the medical system. No, led by the Spirit of God. We've got to go back to the basics of being led by the Spirit of Yan. So if you have put above the Spirit, above the Word, above your relationship with Yeshua, your relationship with your doctor, you're in idolatry. I can tell you that already. And that's the reason why you can't break out of the circle of infirmity. Hallelujah. So whatever it is, you've loved your money more, whatever it is, maybe you've loved your family more, and you've given, yeah, all kinds of excuses. Well, I can't do your will because of my husband, because of my wife, because of my son, because of my daughter. No, those are all excuses. You've got to repent because he doesn't accept them. And so that breaks down your spiritual and your physical immune system. So if you have repented, it says, Father, forgive me, and you've rejected all that. Say, I totally reject all of these sins, I reject breaking your commandments. I totally repent of that. 
and I ask you to come right now with your name, Yeshua, and with your blood, and cleanse me from all sin, cleanse me from all unrighteousness, cleanse me from all lukewarm, cleanse me for all, from all compromise, cleanse me from all unbelief, cleanse me from all fear to men, or fear to other things, and fear to infirmity, and fear to viruses, and fear to not money. Uh, uh, cleanse me right now from all wickedness, cleanse me from all bad news, cleanse me from all curses, hallelujah, Thank you, Yeshua. And Father, I thank you that I give you my life afresh. Say with him. I give you my life afresh. And I ask you to come in afresh into my life and fill me with your Holy Spirit and fire all the way to my bones and to my bone marrow. I receive your forgiveness. And I receive a new beginning today in Yeshua's name. And now I speak into my bones and into my bone marrow. So put your hands in your bones, wherever you want to put them, where there is some bones. I say, I declare the name of Yeshua into my bones and into my bone marrow. Yeshua means salvation, healing and deliverance. So I speak Yeshua, salvation, healing and deliverance into my bones and my bone marrow. I speak the blood of Yeshua into my blood and all the way to my bone marrow, washing me from all curses and all sin. I speak the word of Yah into my bones and my bone marrow because it is health to all my flesh and refreshing to all my bones. And now I receive the fullness of your Holy Spirit and fire with praying in tongues, hallelujah, that penetrates into the depth of my being. Now begin to pray in tongues a little bit. You've never prayed in tongues before, this is your day. Hallelujah. I break any curses over you. I break any curses over you right now of all that you've repented. I bind all spirits of darkness that have come against you right now in sickness, in infirmity and calamities and tragedies and everything else in between. Every disease, every virus, every plague, every pandemic, every fear, I cast it out and I command you to leave. I command you to leave everybody that has repented today, everybody that has confessed and forsaken their sin and have come, hallelujah, to walk in the ways of the kingdom. In the name of Yeshua, I bless you right now. I bless you all the way to your bones. I bless you to your bones. I bless you all the way to your bone marrow. Now begin to rejoice and delight in Yahweh. Say, I rejoice. I delight in you, Adonai. I, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I praise you. You dwell in my praises. My bones are filled with your praises. My bones are filled with joy and delight in Yahweh. I proclaim to my bones. Have faith in Yah. Believe that He is. And He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Bones, listen to the word of Yahweh. He's my rewarder. Therefore, my immune system is strong and wholesome and full of the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the blessing. I choose to walk in holiness, separated from evil, separated from sin, from rebellion, from wickedness in every way. I choose to walk in thanksgiving, separated from strife, separated from self-centeredness, separated from self-victimization, self-pity. I walk in thanksgiving. My bones, my bone marrow, thank Yahweh all day long. My bones say, I rejoice in Yahweh always. And again I say, I rejoice. I walk in forgiveness. My bones walk in forgiveness. I have forgiveness all the way to my bone marrow. In the name of Yeshua. No bitterness can take a hold of me. 
I break the power of all bitterness and all strife out of my bones. My bones are filled with faith, holiness, thanksgiving, forgiveness, and integrity. I walk in integrity because I fear Yahweh and I don't fear men. Because I fear Yahweh and I don't fear disease. I walk in integrity because I choose to be popular with the God of Israel above my popularity with men. In the name of Yeshua, I walk in integrity. I speak in integrity. I have truth in my innermost being. I have truth. The spirit of truth and the spirit of life have penetrated my bones and my bone marrow in Yeshua's mighty name. And everyone would say, Amen. Amen. Give him a good clap offering as I blow. Say with me, I declare this shofar of deliverance has penetrated into all my bones and my bone marrow, making me free from every disease, breaking the power of every autoimmune disease. Any weakness is out of my bones and out of my bone marrow. I'm strong in Yahweh and in the power of his might. I'm strong in Yahweh and in the power of his might. I'm strong in Yahweh, in my most inner being, in Yeshua's mighty name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. I'm not finished. I promise I'll give you some physical instructions. But before I do that, and I'm going to give you some physical instructions as well, I want you to make sure that you share this video, beloved ones, and don't be so self-centered as to keep it for yourself, because really everybody should hear it. And the second thing, I wanted to make sure that you're not so self-centered that you eat and you do not bless. It's very important you learn to bless every time that you receive a word that impacts your life. That's what Galatians 6, 6 to 8 says. It says, do not be deceived. For God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, so he will reap. And it says, share all good things with them that instruct you in the faith. In other words, to do the right thing before God, we need to learn to honor the word and the servant that gives us the word. So I'm going to encourage all of you today to do that and to bless Yahweh and honor him by honoring me and the message that I've spoken into your life today. That is the righteous thing to do before the Almighty. You can never buy this word. I've had to live it to deliver it to you. So you can never pay me for what I've had to live to deliver you something that can rescue your life and to give you something that I've simply obtained from the Holy Spirit. The insight has been from the Holy Spirit, but I've had to walk it to be able to also speak it. And you can never pay for the word. No, but you can honor. And not only can, but honoring is one way to walk in integrity with very wholesome bones and immune system. The life of a giver is always a life of blessing. How many will say amen to that? Amen? amen. So make sure that you share with other people that you, uh, and you also um, uh, share with other people and that you also give uh, and bless and help us to continue the mission of making people whole in every way shape and form that's my passion everything that i do is for the purpose of facilitating the kingdom of god from coming from heaven down to earth into your life amen so now physical immunization okay i told you that i'm going to give you uh, an encore at the end 
and I hope you're still with me over there. And if you are with me, you better just go show up with some likes and hearts and something so I know I've got somebody with me. Uh, but I want to give you an encore today. Uh, it's from Psalms 103, verse 5. It says, He satisfies your years and your being with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. In other words, there's some good stuff that he wants you to have, that he wants you to do so that your youth is renewed like an eagle and you can be whole. Okay, number one, keep your blood pure from food dyes and chemicals. Write it down quickly. Keep your blood pure from food dyes and chemicals. Number two, drink pure water. Stop drinking all those sodas, come on. Number two, drink pure water. Try to get the best water you can. Number three, eat healthy, no refined sugars, no white and refined flours. Eat as close as the way that Elohim created things to be. He made sure that the wheat has uh, wheat germ and it has wheat bran. Make sure that you get whole wheat and not the wheat that it says enriched. Enriched is absolutely nothing but a lie because they take all the good stuff out and they put a few vitamins in. So you take whole wheat, you take brown rice, you take quinoa, you take good wholesome things and no white sugar. Escape it like the plague. You know what nutrition is called white sugar? The white poison. Because it is refined just like heroin is refined and it is as addictive and it's actually murdering people right and left. Most people eat quantities of sugar because they don't check the labels and they have sugar nearly in everything. So you check your labels, escape sugars. You want to sweeten something, use fruits, use uh, dates, wonderful dates, beautiful dates. You can use a little bit of agave, a little bit of honey, but even honey don't take too much. The Bible says eat a little honey. Not eat too much honey. Okay, eat a little honey. And you can have some stevia, and that is a natural sweetener. But escape white sugar and widely refined things. Eat as much as possible raw fresh fruits and vegetables. And as much as possible organic. Minimize red meat and eat more fish. And even vegetable protein as well. Like for example, lentils, garbanzo beans together with brown rice, they make a whole vegetable protein. Don't eat any unclean animals. The father calls them detestable. Go to Le Leviticus 11, take a look at the list and get rid of everything you have in your, flesh in, uh, in your fridge concerning unclean animals and begin to eat only that which he considers a clean animal and make sure that you can eat it as, as, as possible without those antibiotics and non-GMO and without and, and as organic as you can. But no unclean animals. That opens the door to any virus, retrovirus, and anything else. And not, not only breaks the immune system uh, physically, but also spiritually. It really gets curses instead of blessings into you. So go ahead and do that. Now take healthy supplements. I'm not going to take you which ones to take. I can tell you which ones I take, but uh, I, I'm not giving you personal or private instruction what ones to take, uh, you know, but for example, I take uh, uh, quite a lot of natural vitamin C and uh, quite a lot of natural calcium, magnesium, and I like to take the B complex and, you know, those vitamins, the, na the most natural possible Everything in uh, capsules that are vegetarian, because if you have gelatin capsules, you're going to be eating pork, because the gelatin is normally made out of pork. And so uh, make sure that they are all vegetable capsules if you're going to take any supplements and, and herbs and things. Uh, you need to study a little bit more about these things and what supplements to take. I, I cannot get into that right now. Maybe at some point, but not right now. And then exercise. And I'll tell you something, it doesn't have to be complicated. You, you don't have to go to the triathlon, okay? Uh, it's just enough that you will be walking and swimming, okay? Walk some, go out, take a round around your neighborhood, do it uh, a few times a week, go swim, take a few minutes, swim on the sea, swim in a swimming pool, walk on a treadmill. You know, simple things, but walking and swimming are the simplest and the most effective exercises to keep you healthy and to keep your body bones thick. Hallelujah. And finally, I know I did it quickly and there's a lot to talk about that, but I don't have time for that now. But whatever I gave you already is quite a bit, so enjoy it. Um, 
and, and but the last scripture I'm going to tell you is definitely my life scripture. And I, you know why I said I've got some life scriptures that for me they are an anchor to my soul. 3 John 1, 2. It says, loved ones, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health just as it is well with your soul. That is my prayer for all of you today. Shalom and Shavuot Tov. Have a blessed week.